Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Green Room Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni, and joining me once again is Colin Mitchell. And Colin, today we are joined by our good friend, J.D. Davis, a.k.a. North Texas Eagle, on Twitter. You can also check him out on Patreon, the best North Texas coverage. J.D., how are you doing today? Good, good, guys. Open day, and I get to talk to my my Green Room buddy, so it's a, it's a good day. Mm-hmm. It's a good Thursday. That's right. That's right. Colin's wearing his World Series hoodie. Not honestly a 100% coincidence. I don't care about baseball at all. So, <laughs> hey, respect. I, I just thought you were wearing it because I was coming on the show. So, that's, hey, that's great. I mean, it's the 2011 World Series. So, I know that's not a very good time. We're past it. For, we're past it. That's well, I know past, now man. you are, but you know, <laughs> nothing I, matters I anymore. Yeah. I unknowingly wore this for years, not knowing that what had the history behind it. So, it's probably how you I got, got it. You got confused when you were walking down the street and you just random people started crying and stuff when they saw it. <laughs> it's actually a World Series championship hoodie. It was the ones that they like give away. They throw in the trash and Colin just like picked it up. It was when he just moved here and he was, was scrounging for clothes by himself. So funny. <laughs> it is a World Series championship hoodie. It's like that that did not happen. Colin. That didn't happen. Yeah, I come um, here. I come here and I just say congratulations to everybody. They're just so mad at me. We did it. Anyways. We did it. There you go. Um, but JD, it's been uh, we've been all in on basketball, as you know, uh, over the past few weeks uh, with the end of the season and the NIT, and then the end of the season again. And uh, for those listening, we will uh, touch on um, Jason Edwards after we we talk to uh, JD, but. We want to talk about spring football and kind of what is where it's been the past few weeks and then obviously spring game going into uh, spring game on April 6th. So wanted to kind of just open the floor to you a little bit, J.D., just kind of what you're hearing, and then we'll get into a little bit specifics, offense, defense, and transfers and everything. Um, but in general, feedback from spring – from the spring season, what have you heard? What do you think? Uh, and just, you know, kind of where are you at with, with this team now a few weeks into it? That's a lot more positive feedback than it was last year, for sure. Um, you know, hearing a lot of good things about the new guys, the transfers coming in. Um, I'm trying to – should be more prepared. I'm coming – trying to find my list right now. But, um, yeah, I mean, the guys that are standing out, like I said, we are guys that we've talked about as, as Ashib Young from – Ole Miss. I mean, that guy's. I've heard his name mentioned by everybody I talked to. I think. Okay, I think you know, he was the highest rated uh, transfer portal player, um, at least on on three. I didn't check twenty four seven, but he was like an eighty eight point eight or something like that in the portal yeah, rating. Yeah, and he's a guy that you can definitely tell has played meaningful snaps at Iowa State and Ole Miss. I mean, he is a legit power five talent. Um, other guys that's standing out that that got me excited it's like Jake Shipley, the defensive end from. Um, Oregon. He looks like he's going to be a player as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, you know, all the, it seems like all the new guys, especially along the offensive line. Uh, I know Sonoy got to talk to Coach Cutter a couple weeks ago and he's really excited about, um, he's got a ton of pieces to work with up there. I think they're still in that process of trying to figure out which the best five is and where to put everybody. Cause I know it seems like one practice we go to, you know, this guy's playing center, this guy's left tackle. You go to the next practice, that guy's left guard, that guy's, you know, right tackle, and it's just – I think they've got a lot of moving pieces right now trying to find the best five. But, um, yeah, I think that's an exciting room to – I mean, excited for me just to see the the amount of growth that room had as far as if you you know put the average height and weight last year to the guys they brought in. I mean, you're getting a lot closer to peer, peer, power five level, you know, offensive line room. So that's that's been, I'd say, the bright spots, the, the new guys stepping up and, and that offensive line group. Mentioned the offensive line. Uh, they also, uh, on offense, lost, you know, Chandler Rogers, wide receivers, running backs. Has there been any, any offensive standouts uh, early this spring? Yeah, Damon Ward's a guy that, you know, I'd kind of penciled in as, could he make that Macklin top jump? You know, Macklin was a guy that had 400 yards receiving before last year blowing up. Um, you know, Damon Ward was a guy that I'm, I was hoping, just me as, as a guy that covers, is just a guy that could make that same jump. And it seems like he's really kind of took that leadership role uh, to another level and, and is potentially a guy that could, you know, break out and kind of fill the void. Um, as far as the quarterback room, I think um, that it's a pretty fun room to watch right now. I think um, Cash McCollum's a guy that could be a legit quarterback in the future for North Texas. Uh, I know that, you know, there was a lot of nervousness about Chandler 
Morris making it on campus, but uh, I think he was at the the scrimmage last week, and he's he's been up here quite a bit throwing with with wide receivers and stuff. So it's gonna, that's gonna be an interesting battle, I think, going into the fall to see who kind of prevails. I think you know money odds would be you know Chandler Morris being able to come in here summer and fall and and win that job. But yeah, I think that's definitely gonna be something interesting to watch come fall. I think it's interesting you mentioned uh, like an overall more positive response uh, this time around compared to last year. And obviously it was a new staff last year getting put in, but like, I think we forget those early uh, coach Morris uh, press conferences during the season, where it's like, we got to have guys buy in, you know, we got to have everybody locked in, da, da, da. Like last year's team for, you know, lack of a better word is like, it wasn't really his team. You know, he didn't players, some players, they chose to uh, come back and play for him, but like, it wasn't like he had recruited all these guys, you know, even out of the portal. Um, they, they were kind of just kind of coming on without fully knowing what they were getting into. And, you know, for, I said it early last year, it's like, this is going to be a very different team next year because some players will move on. Some players don't, you know, maybe got coached and didn't want to play uh, that style or, you know, play for those coaches. And now you get players in that. I think year two, you get the buy-in level just is going to be at a different um, <clears throat> degree this, this year round. So that's something I'm, I'm interested to see over the off season. Like you said, is hear more positivity, talk to the players and just kind of see where their heads at. Because last year, early on, you could tell it was like, Oh, we lost JD. Oh, he's here, but audio got, only. Oh, we got you, JD. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, I don't know what happened. My my camera just cut off, but I mean, we can. I can, can roll on in the dark, or we can. <laughs> <laughs> Here, we'll, hold on. All right, he's back. He's back. We got him. Um, but yeah. Anyways, that's all I was saying. It was the the buy in factor. I think going into this year, at least start to the start of the year, has to be in a better place. I don't know uh, if you what your thoughts you have on that. Yeah, I mean, I think. I mean, I, I don't want to say that you know players listen to message boards, but I mean, I think we all know that the fans, you know, when Capone was announced, you know, it was announced that they're running a three, three, five, you know, the fan base, I would say 99% of the fan base was like, Oh, three, three, five won't work. And I mean, I don't want to say that the players kind of bought into that too, but it just seemed like that they really didn't gel. But, you know, we've heard Capone mention during spring ball and interviews and stuff that, you know, they did shut out opponents at the, towards the end of the year. And it did seem like they were getting more, they didn't, you know, put a full game together, but uh, I'm excited to see, you know, the new pieces. That they brought in guys that's played in the three, three, five, that's familiar with the defense before. Um, you know, if they do buy in, um, you know, can we get some full games of the like, like they did last year? Like I said, we're shutting out opponents in the, the whole half, second half of games. Um, if they can do that with this offense, I think, you know, we could be in for a seven, eight win year. Um, we were talking about the offense kind of just in general, when you have look at your like depth chart or just look at the players on the team, how many jobs do you think are like, I don't say locked down, but you feel good about like, all right, penciling this guy in as a starter at this point in the year, like Gabe Blair and then Landon sides. <laughs> Is those the two you start with? Yeah. And I think both those are hurt right now. So, I mean, I think that yeah. kind of opens up, you know, I would say Damon Ward, I feel pretty confident, you know, he's going to, you know, lock in one of the, the wide receiver positions. Um, I'm hearing good things about Oscar Hammond, the tight end transfer. I think, you know, you could pretty safely pencil him in as starting at tight end. Mm -hmm. um, the running back room, it, it, to me, it, it seems – I'm not really sure what's going on there because we're hearing reports like scrimmaging. We've got wide receiver, you know, Shane Porter's running, you know, plays at the running back position. So I don't know if that's just like packages they're working on, but – the fact you've got wide receivers taking snaps at running back has me a little concerned. I don't know what's – I mean, we've heard mm -hmm. good reports about Smith. We've heard good reports about Bradford. Ragsdale's still coming back from injury, so he's not here yet. But, um, yeah, that that part I haven't really got a question or an answer um, why that, that they're doing the, the running backs at the – or wide receivers at running back position. So I would say that, that position's kind of nervous. But I think we've got a pretty good idea of, like, the offensive line, the names. I'm just not really sure – 100% where they're going to be, you know, at. I think yeah. uh, Makai Lee, the transfer from Missouri, I think he's he's the real deal. Mm -hmm. You know, Landon Peterson from Texas Tech, I think those are two guys that will be penciled in somewhere. Um, 
And then you go you flip to the defensive side of the ball. I don't know if that was part of your question, but the defensive side of the ball. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just, just rolling through. Uh, right I mean, ahead. I think Young, I mean, Young, the safety Young, Allen, uh, the transfer from Texas. I think those are two guys you could pencil in. Um, Rich Tejada at one of the cornerback positions. Mm-hmm. You know, Weslowski and Brown at linebacker. I mean, there's, there's definitely some guys there that um, I think, you know, are pretty sure bets. But then, you know, as, as far as a whole, there's still, I would say, a ton of questions. I know a lot of people, I get a lot of messages and asking, you know, what defensive line are they recruiting, you know, blah, blah, blah. I think that they, you know, we've seen some offers go out. I think it wouldn't surprise me to add two or three guys after spring on that defensive defensive line. That's, that's a position I think that, they're they're not happy with the depth, and and I think that there definitely will be some some names added. For sure, um, transfer wise, obviously they had to bring in a lot of transfers. You already mentioned a lot of them. Um, is there anybody specific that's really stood out to you? Uh, like I said, Young Young's a guy that's for sure. Uh, Hammond's a guy, a uh, guy that I don't think we really talked about that much when during the recruiting cycle, but Jaden Hill. I think that's a guy that's definitely going to see the field. He's played a lot of football, uh, even if it was you know D three D two at Ohio D- Dominican. I think he's a guy that's uh, played a lot of football, and I think he's he's kind of a veteran presence that I think will definitely definitely see the field. Um, but yeah, those are uh, Dalton Carnes. I guess is another guy that that I've heard seen. good things about that wide receiver. Yeah, played a lot of played some football at, at Houston, so I think he's a guy that's gonna we're gonna see kind of in that Michael Law slot role, you know, mm-hmm. kind of possession type receiver. Um, kind of when you need a first down, you need four or five yards, kind of a, a sure, surefire guy. Yeah. All right. And I know you already talked about the defense a little bit and how, you know, he's – Capone believes in, in the three three five, And obviously, like you said, they had success at certain points last year. Is that just – is the approach kind of the same, just like we're just going to perfect this and we're going to run this system as well as we can? Or are there, do you think there will be tweaks uh, going into this year? I think there will definitely be tweaks. I think that Capone said, like he said another day in the interview, that, you know, they came in here last year and, you know, didn't really work on fundamentals. They kind of worked on so much on, you know, implementing the new defense. Yeah. And uh, I think they've taken a step back now and kind of made it a little more basic. But, um, the thing that I've always, you know, I know a lot of people have been down on Capone or, you know, you know, haven't really gave him a shot. And I'm understandable. I mean, last year they did have the worst defense in the country. The yeah. thing that's got me excited is, or that I'm always optimistic about him is, you know, when Seth started, you know, the defensive coordinators, you know, Ref and some other guys, it was more of a old school approach. Like, you know, this is the way we do things. Like we ain't changing. We're going to have 280 pound defensive linemen. And that's what we're going to do. Like that's, mm-hmm. that's, that's our thing. I haven't never got that vibe with Capone. I always feel like, you know, they're going to continue to to add stuff. They're going to continue to make tweaks. They're going to continue to – I've never got the vibe from, from Capone and his defensive staff that, you know, this is, you know, this is the way we're going to do things and we're going to, you know, if this is the sink we're – the ship we're going to sink on. I don't get that vibe. You know, I think if, you know, we've seen some four down fronts run last year at times mm-hmm. and it, it worked good, but, you know, I was always – told you know the reason they didn't stick with that more is they just didn't have the depth up front to to run that um but yeah i think that that i think bringing in like a coach like coach odom who's familiar with uh, the odd front but has run different variations i thought was pretty telling um you know that that this is they're not 100 percent you know dead set on the 335 that we're going to see some variations of that uh kind of moving forward so yeah i definitely think that that there is some, 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 room. some wiggle room. Yeah, some yeah. wiggle room moving forward for sure. I guess long story short. Yeah. Improving from last year's defense, you already mentioned that they were the worst last year. Um, and you've, uh, defensive line was one of those weaknesses and they still haven't really shored up that position. How much of an improvement do you see right now from what they have added? Yeah, I would say that's probably the, the, even, you know, talk to some of the things they've said in, in interviews and stuff. I think that's a, a room that they're not, content with i mm-hmm. wouldn't say they're not happy with because i do think there is some good pieces in there i think uh courtland Rosal, uh june rod brown uh you add a guy like jake shipley uh key smith's a guy that i've heard you know has shown flashes that that there's mm-hmm. a chance he could be a dude moving forward 
but just overall depth. And I think you, if you look at the recruiting, you know, they targeted a ton of defensive line transfer targets, uh, JUCO guys, and, and I mean, struck out. I mean, bringing in just Shipley was really the only defensive line transfer they brought in. So I think that they're definitely, you know, I think they've been pretty honest in interviews. I think they're they're definitely looking to add more to that room um, as far as not only depth, but potentially starter type quality. Um, and I, like I think I've already said before, but I would I could see us adding two to three guys after spring to kind of help shore up that position. I will say that the 2023 class, like those guys coming into year two, I mean, I guess specifically on defense with Keith Smith and Taylor Starling and Javen Anderson, um, those guys, I, I feel good about them, like even if they don't start as being like contributors this year. Absolutely. Uh, Evan Jackson, um, Evan Jackson, Brian Nelson. I mean, there's a chance mm-hmm. that out of that class, you know, there's going to be games that there could be, you know, five to six guys from that class, you know, on your two deep, if not all of them starting. So I think that's a looking back, that's going to be a, that's a pretty impressive class already um, to, to be able to get, you know, potentially five to six contributors on that side of the ball. Um, I think this, this defense probably needed, you know, definitely some guys that could contribute quicker, but I think those guys got the potential to be really special in the next year or so. On either side of the ball, is, is there a freshman you think that can help them this year? That's a tough one. I know. That's why I asked you. <laughs> I mean, really, it's just the, the freshman, you know, you to me, I kind of like you, you think mark off all the, um, you know, offense, defensive linemen. It's so hard for, you know, those, those freshmen to come in. So mm-hmm. you automatically think, you know, running back, you know, Kiefer Sibley, who was a highly recruited guy. He's already on campus. Uh, you know, does that, you know, that's, that's a name that comes to mind. Uh, but Mercer, the, the center from Prosper, I mean, his name's been mentioned a lot already. I think there's a ton of veteran uh, presences on that offensive line. We've mm-hmm. talked about the amount of transfers they brought in. You're bringing back Gabe Blair and Jet Duncan. Uh, but that's a guy that's intrigues me. Does is he able to break the two deep and potentially, you know, buy for a starting um, that starting center job as a true freshman? That would be pretty exciting to see. Uh, but yeah, if I had to put money, I would say you know Sibley would probably be the the one true freshman that that I could see making a, a an impact year one. Just because the, the to me it seems like there's some question marks at that running back room as of right now. Yeah. Um... What are you expecting to see in the spring game, April 6th? Like, do you – or do you – how much stock, I guess, do you want to even put in, in the spring game? Uh, I mean, I think, to me, I want to see, you know, defensive wrapping up and tackling. I want them to see – I mean, we see all, saw a lot last year where, you know, we had guys in the right hole. They just missed tackles or, mm-hmm. you know, they were there for an interception and, you know, it bounces off of them. Or, you know, we've got two guys standing around a, a – opposite team receiver and then next thing you know they score a touchdown so i really want to just what i'm looking for april 6th is the defense making the plays they that are there for them to make and then um you know i think everybody's you know interest is how does the quarterback shape out does does stone look the part does stone look like the guy that won the job last fall um you know we've heard good things about cash you know he's got the frame he's got the size he's got the arm Mm -hmm. to be you know I hate to say it, but a guy that could even play at the next level with his size. So I'm excited to see him in, in live action. Um, and then, you know, Mooney from, from Liberty, see what he's about. I think I've heard good things about him as well. I hate to, I haven't mentioned him sooner, but you know, he's, he's definitely, um, I don't know that the quarterback's name from Baylor last year, he's at Mississippi state this year, but I've heard two people say that they, he reminds them Schaefer. Schaefer, Schaefer, Blake Schaefer. Yes. I've had two like different it. people tell me that that he reminds them uh, he reminds them of him a lot so yeah i think the quarterback room i'm excited to watch but then you know how does the offensive line what what five kind of rolls out and then yeah. you know watch wide receiver steps up would be the the things i'm most excited about spring game nice. for sure uh moving on to next season i guess i guess we've already been talking about next season but specifically next season uh there's another stretch of death mm-hmm. um 
And uh, that is, I guess, however you want to break it up. You got FAU, Memphis, Tulane, Army, UTSA, or you could go Memphis, Tulane, Army, UTSA, however you want to go about it. But going to next year, what's your thoughts on the schedule? To me, we went through the schedule the other day, and, and me and Sonoy, and, and to me, there's there's so many, like, question marks and stuff. But um, I, I'm just not as, as scared of that, I mm-hmm. guess, uh, torture, whatever you want to call it, gr- the the – just because it seems like they're besides Memphis, it seems like every que- team has some question marks um, moving forward. So no SMU, and I think that in itself makes things uh, a bit easier. Um, now I will say three of those five games are at on the road at FAU, at Memphis, and at UTSA. Like you said, though, UTSA, we don't know, question mark. I'd feel a lot better if Trailer wasn't there anymore, honestly. But, I mean, Frank Harris is gone, and we'll see what they do offensively. Memphis is, I think, the favorite to win the conference this year, just going into it early. Uh, FAU, I kind of always just pencil them in just because they're FAU, and they, I think they should be good every year when you're in Florida like that. Um, and then Tulane, obviously, new coach, uh, but a really good coach. Um from Troy they hired and then army um i maybe just maybe we just include them because um navy you know gave us fits last triple year. option just sucks I yeah triple option annoying <laughs> play against, but and the, the worst part to me about that is you know you you get army you have to spend you know that whole week dedicated to running an a def, an offense that you only see once a year and yeah. then literally 4 days later you've got UTSA at San Antonio so that to me, I mean, if it, UTSA, I'd feel a lot more confident. But just like I said, you dedicate, you know, the whole week, two weeks before Army learning, or, you know, learning how to defend the triple option. Then next thing you know, you've got seems like UTSA on two or three days rest. And not for, like the non-conference schedule is it's not the hard like it's not like it's the hardest where you have like, oh, you have to go at Texas or something and at whatever Miami or something. But like USA, South Alabama is always tough Mm -hmm. um and you're playing that on the road off rip to start the year Mm -hmm. um and then texas tech and wyoming like wyoming and and usa those are probably two games where you want to split and that similar to last year where it was like oh you can't lose to fiu you know this year it's like i don't i don't want them to lose both of those games and start one and three, like just perception wise. The good thing is they start conference with Tulsa this year. So yeah. And Wyoming them. and South Alabama, the two things that gives me hope is both of them. They've got new coaches at both of them. Now, Wyoming just promoted from within. So I feel like that's a little bit, well, mm-hmm. South Alabama did too, but I feel a lot better about South Alabama first game with major Applewhite, um, you know, and, and several South Alabama people left with the coach. So that, that feels like a more winnable game than it did two or three months ago, I would say. I, I'm still just waiting for, and I know I'm going to sound soft, but I'm like, I'm waiting for the, the schedule where we don't have to play FAU or Memphis or, or, or like one of Memphis or Tulane. Yeah. Like, I just feel like you replace one of those games with like a fill in the blank team, Rice mm-hmm. or something. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, oh man. Rice was good last year. Yes, Come on, Rice Bruni. was good last year, but it, <laughs> it's Rice. So I'm really hoping that Memphis just announces that Penny Hardaway is going to start coaching football as well, so mm. they can just fall off about halfway through the season once conference starts, and then we can just chalk that up as an automatic W. It's exactly what I want to happen. That, that the, I never expected me to hate Memphis of all places, and now all of a sudden because of social media and because of Penny Hardaway, uh, I hate Memphis now. So. Yeah, yeah. Memphis is is probably the new SMU, so congrats mm, to Memphis. Somewhat, I mean, they're, not, they're not here anymore. Right. So they're not here anymore. So right. someone's got to replace them. Honestly, I'm glad we don't even have to think about SMU. I was thinking about that the other day I was, when SMU hired their basketball coach. I'm like, I don't even have to text Colin about this because I don't care. Yeah. Just go ahead, go over there and lose half of y'all's games in conference every year because you're not competing with them. Uh, sorry, random SMU tangent. Uh, that's it. We made it. We made it to the end, JD. Sorry for uh, all the technical difficulties, but we did make it. We did make it. Um, thanks for coming on, as always. Um, you're the best at covering the, the Mean Green. Uh, you can plug all your stuff and uh, tell everyone how to how to find you. 
know, we've got the uh, the North Texas Eagles on Patreon. We've got um, interviews. We've we've been to practice. Got uh, interview videos from all the the press conferences afterwards. Um, we've got the whole list of the 45 kids that was on campus for Junior Day, which is one of the biggest ones I can remember. Um, we've also had it. They've had a couple four star wide receivers on campus this week. We've got those listed. So um, we try to keep you know several things breaking throughout the week. So try to get make it worth your money. But um, yeah, North Texas Eagle on Patreon is where we can you can find most of my work and at North Texas Eagle on Twitter. Yeah, that's a lot. There he is the best um, North Texas reporter on the beat. Uh, thanks, JD, for for coming on. Thank you all for letting me join the the best North Texas podcast, the Green oh, Room. <laughs> yes, it is true. All right, he said it. We could put it on a shirt now. It's all good. And as of course, his camera goes out as we wrap up the show. <laughs> Boom! I'm back. He's back. <laughs> Just a, just a close-up of his face with the camera. I'm back. <laughs> and you guys see me? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yes. I better get out of here before I mess up anything else. You feel like, feel like a nuke is about to fall out of the sky now. <laughs> any longer. <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys. All right, man. <laughs> see ya. See ya. Boom. Boom. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> All right. Um... There's spring football um, recap. And now, real quick, we can talk about the unfortunate news. Get real yeah. somber. Mm-hmm. Um, two it two up. players on North Texas men's basketball ventured the portal. Uh, what is this? Two days after us recording a podcast saying we didn't know who was going to enter the portal. And it is Chris Morgan, um, reserve big man, and – Jason Edwards, first team, all conference, 20 points per game. Um, where do you want to start? What do you think? What were your thoughts when you saw the news? Um, half expected. Obviously, you don't want to. I was kind of clinging on the the hope that because he had such a big role that he'd want to like be locked into that. But I completely understand if you get first team all conference and you score 30 a game multiple times that you're going to try to get get more, which you know, respect to that. Um, my very first reaction was in my head, I'm still assuming Ruben's gone. So this makes things hard in my head because they have to replace two guards in my head. Right. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, like we don't know anything. Yeah. Uh, I was just searching for Ruben to see if uh, on Twitter, like latest, latest tweets, Ruben Jones and nothing yet. But I, I just feel like it's safe to assume just because of, he's been here four years and he's graduating and you know, same type of situation. He's going to want to get what's his. So with that being said, when you lose another lead guard and Jason who basically kind of kept your team afloat while Ruben and CJ and everybody was injured, you got to kind of go back to the drawing board. Now we did say that when you lose a guy like this, like you said, you go to any community college, any Juco and you just go, Hey, or sorry, any Juco, not community college. And you go, hey, you scored 25 points. Do you want to keep doing that here? Yeah. And that's your pitch. So replacing him, I don't think is going to be hard, but it's going to be hard to find a guy that's that dynamic. Like, I think you can find like another, like Tyler Perry or somebody like that. Not saying Tyler Perry wasn't great, but I think we all saw this year how Jason Edwards was just very dynamic in the ways that he can score. And I think it's that would that regardless, any level is going to be tough to find. Yeah. First thing I noticed was in Jeff Barzello's tweet was signing with YMAPAA Sports, mm-hmm. uh, which is obviously an agency for professional athletes worldwide, a marketing service for them worldwide. Um, so clearly, when you when players hire agents and hire those those companies, um, there is a part of negotiating a uh, part of negotiation that goes on with whatever team that they're going to next. Like you're, you're being upfront about it too. Like you're not just like, you know, trying to talk to coaches, and be like, Hey, how much can I get this? And then be like, Hey, here's my agent. Let's work something out. And let's go from there. Um, so good for him uh, because I don't think, I mean, obviously he could, he can go play overseas and, and make money, whatever, but you know, for him coming from um, the route that he's taken to, to get to North Texas, like, you know, make, make some money and capitalize on it but he was already whether it was with an agency whether he was with an agency or not he was gonna 
get calls from big schools. Like there was, there's no doubt about that. So I'm interested to see uh, a lot of people are saying, you know, Providence is in it. Friar, Friar, Friar. I'm looking at the the replies to all to, to Jeff Borzello's tweet. It's Friar about a hundred times. Um, so, you know, Providence, maybe somewhere, somewhere like that. It'll be interesting to see because like you said, he was able to just kind of shoot whenever he wanted. I think he ended the year like top, 30 or 40 in the country and sh- shot percentage on Ken Palm. Like he had the ultimate green light. Yeah. His and usage was crazy too. Yeah. So let me see. Let me see where it ended up. Where do we end up in Ken Palm 74? Um, he ended the year 51st in usage, 23rd in shot percentage. So yeah, this is a guy who is going to get his shots up and I'm sure wherever he goes, that coach, knows that so i'm interested to see how he's used um next year and what kind of you know what kind of deal i guess this marketing agency gets him but yeah it's not a not a surprise i I don't think to me like i was hopeful that he would stay but jason is the type of guy that is ultimate like super super competitive right we had him on when he committed here and he was talking about how competitive he is um and he's kind of just like wired differently like he is just a he's kind of like always on go mode. So it doesn't surprise yeah. me that maybe he's looking for like something, you know, a step up real, real quick and maybe get some money and just get going. So, um, yeah, those are the two transfers so far. We haven't heard of anybody else. Like I said, on the last podcast, I expect somebody else to go, whoever that is. Um, my hope right now is I want CJ Nolan to stay more than anything. Are like, you assuming also me- that Ruben's probably gone? I'm not assuming, but it wouldn't surprise me one way or the other. Yeah. I hope he stays, but um, it, it wouldn't surprise me either way. Um, Nolan, for me, is at the top of my keep list. Why is that? Him and Ruben, I think, are at the top of my keep list. I just think CJ Nolan, with a full year of being healthy and like giving him the ball, I think he can be JV on Hamlet-esque. Really? Like, May obviously like maybe not to that degree, but like the strength, the ability to get in the paint. You play through a lead guard that can post up and that can get in the paint like that. Yeah, and he can shoot. Like as we saw as the year went yeah. on, he ended the year thirty seven percent from three. But just in general, um, I think there's real possibility that he kind of takes that next step next year if you keep him. So, and I I think he should stay. I think he will stay. So. I feel good about J- uh, CJ Nolan. Now you just surround him with whoever else. You know, John Bugs, get him, keep him another year. Um, and then you see between Aaron and Ruben who stays or, you know, if they stay and kind of move on from there. But it's going to be every year at every school, whether it's P5, whether or whether it's high major, whether it's mid major, you are basically rebuilding. Yeah. Roster. Like that's just how it goes. So continuity is a thing of the past pretty much L- this year was great because you were able to keep Ruben and Aaron right and Sissoko so that was our whole thing was oh you got to keep those guys let's run it back and then the newcomers were actually the best players on the team pretty much for a lot of the year so um it's going to be a revolving door we'll see how Ross constructs this roster but I think he has a lot to pitch in the portal and that's what I'm excited to see is how I mean how many mid-major programs can say We've been a top 100 team for the past five years. Two like probably that. higher than that. No, yeah, like probably top, 70, 80. Top, top 80. Well, I'm looking yeah. through Ken Palm. Let's see. 77, 72, 57, 31, and 74. So, yeah, so top, top 75. 75. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, so. I mean, that, that is a good pitch. Uh, obviously, also we also uh, saw that Chris Morgan is transferring. Yes. I mentioned um, that at the top. But yeah. Sorry. Um, so that's two spots. So we'll see. Yep. Go fill it, fill them up. Um, well, well I think, I there. think, I think they can only fill one because of the freshman coming in. No, at this moment, I think, I th- I think so. If, if my numbers are right. <laughs> well, no, cause Robert Allen's left as well. So one of the spots can be used for a transfer then right now. Allen two transfers. That's three gone. You have two freshmen coming in. Yeah. So you have one spot. Yeah. One, so one spot. Yeah. 
if I did my math right. I might have done my math wrong. We'll see. Okay. All right. Um, there you go. There's the pod. Uh, thank you again, JD, for coming on. Um, we'll be back next week at some point. Um, want to do a depth chart rundown on the football side just to get everybody acclimated to what we're seeing. Uh, probably do it before the spring game, like a pre-spring game depth chart projection, and then maybe have JD on again after the spring game and talk. Spring about game's next game. weekend, you know that, right? The sixth. Yeah, next Saturday. Yeah, is that all right with you? No, it's fine. I just want to make sure, like, because we don't have any indication really on the depth chart right now. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. I told you we're talking to JD. We're gonna get it. We're gonna get it worked out. And then we're gonna run through it. <sighs> Gosh. All man. right. Take a deep so, breath, Colin. So stressful. Uh, just kidding. We got through the podcast with about 15 edits in it, and here we are at the, on the other side. I think so, you need to make the podcast clip. I'm back. I'm <laughs> back. Yes, and just clip his face like right there. All right, that's that's gonna be the thumbnail. Good job, Colin. Good thinking. All right, thank y'all for joining us. We will talk to you later. <laughs>